How do I perform iSyn Inject? How does the inserter work? What are the steps of the procedure? Want to know what you need to know about the new iSyn Inject in the next few minutes? Keep watching to learn more about the latest in glaucoma surgical innovations and reduce your MIGS overwhelm. This video was in part supported by Glaucos. Hey, any MIGS or MIGS wannabe surgeons watching? Stay tuned to the end to get access to a special gift. Hello, and welcome to the iGlaucoma YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Constance Okeke, glaucoma specialist, cataract surgeon, and performer of over 5,000 MIG surgeries over the last decade. Have you ever thought about adding Isen Inject to your surgical armamentarium of MIG surgeries? Well, I highly recommend that decision, and I'm excited to share with you the now third Isen Inject video of the new iGlaucoma video series called MIGS University, where we're all about learning innovation step by step. If you missed the first or second video of the series on the what, where, and how of Isen Inject, or the why of Isen Inject, click on the links below or on the card above to check them out. Let's dive in. So first up, how does one perform Isen Inject? Well, you need to successfully complete cataract surgery and insertion of the IOL. Next, you need to master the foundational steps of angle surgery by being able to get a great view of the angle anatomy. Check out the link below or the card above for one of my previous videos that goes over intraoperative gonioscopy. After this is getting comfortable with the iStent inserter, which has a nice ergonomic design for easy gripping. There is an insertion sleeve retraction button, which slides back the 23 gauge insertion sleeve to reveal a window at the tip. Through the window, you can see the preloaded stents in the insertion tube, and at the very end, you can see the important trocar that aids in guiding the exact position of the stent into the trabecular meshwork and back wall of Schlem's canal. On the inserter is also an eye stent delivery button that is depressed to deploy the two stents, one by one, into the trabecular meshwork. Let's talk about the surgical steps. After completing cataract surgery, fill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic to pressurize the anterior chamber. Next, introduce the inserter into the anterior chamber across the pupil nasally through a clear corneal temporal cataract incision. Then retract the sleeve to reveal the trocar that is placed at the center of the trabecular meshwork. Then, Place the gonia prism on the surface of the eye after you've placed copious viscoelastic to gain an excellent angle view. Then take the inserter tip and place the trocar right at the center of the trabecular meshwork. Press forward, dimpling the trabecular meshwork, release the first stent by pressing the delivery button, and then pull the inserter back, leaving the stent secured in the trabecular meshwork. Then guide the inserter two to three clock hours away from the first stent and then repeat that last step of insertion. Then you're done. Now, what are some surgical pearls? One pearl is that you can enhance your ability to gain access to the robust collector channels by first marking the most prominent episcleral vessels that correlate with these outflow highways. Try to place your stents at these locations. They typically correspond with areas of increased pigment in the trabecular meshwork. Another pearl is to master the stent insertion on the first try into the TM by making a firm dimpling of the TM with the insertion tip prior to pressing the release button. This allows for secure seating of the stent. If the dimpling is too light, the stent won't seat well and it may actually loosen and float into the anterior chamber. This can occur when the trocar is not perfectly centered and the insertion tube is not properly perpendicular aligned with the trabecular meshwork tissue. Trying to reload the half millimeter stent can get tricky and sometimes time consuming. But also note that the, if the dimpling is overly firm, the stent can actually get embedded deep into the TM and we don't want that either. Okay, did you stick with me the whole way? Awesome. And if you want to know what you need to know about 
when to best use the device in which patients. Stay tuned for the last video in the iSTEN Inject series of Minks University. Remember to check out the links below or the card above to get access to the first and second videos on the what, where, why of iSTEN Inject and the how of iSTEN Inject. Hey, if you like the video, press the like button. If you have a friend or colleague who can benefit, and I'm sure you do, be sure to share the video. And if you don't want to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to iGlaucoma YouTube channel and click on the bell to be notified when it comes out. We'd like to hear from you. What did you think of the steps of Eisted insertion? Do you think it will be easy to adopt? Do you think it looks complex? Unsure? We'd love to know. So take this short quiz and let us know what you think. So about that free gift, I didn't forget. Click on the link below in the description area for a free Eisten Inject starter guide. For you MIGS surgeons or you MIGS wannabe surgeons, this is a guide that will take you step by step on how to adopt the Eisten Inject into your surgical armamentarium if you haven't already. Good luck. Thanks for watching iGlaucoma YouTube channel, a place where glaucoma innovation is made easy for eye care professionals.